my first, uh, I reckon, call to action for business schools is to not make diversity and inclusion a tiny mini topic in an elective unit in a business course, um, but rather actually uh, link it in to strategic planning um, because it is a strategic effort and should be a foundational um, you know, element of any business course. Um, and, and, and that positioning of diversity and inclusion topics um, in, in a core pathway in a business school actually um, showcases how important it is. So um, that's my first recommendation is to, to not hide it somewhere in a tiny unit that where it's optional for diverse, diversity and inclusion to be learned and understood uh, for business leaders, it needs to be part of the core curriculum. So that's my first call out. Um, other suggestions, uh, if we were to assume that, you know, leaders are learning it as part of the core curriculum is that um, we really need to teach uh, leaders to ask good questions about data. Um, there's a heavy focus on data and analytics and evidence-based approaches in diversity and inclusion. But what we really need is um, leaders to ask good questions about why certain pieces of data um, are being collected. And the reason I say this is that we can, we can push on the quantitative data, so the counts of um, diversity is within employee demographics, but ignoring the qualitative data, um, actually, which tells the heart, uh, you know, the heart and the lived experience of employees is where the real rich change elements um, come into play. And ignoring that collection of qualitative data actually doesn't affect, um, you know, that much change which, which tells a full picture. So you can lose that element of um, stories and narratives, which are really, really important to the change effort. So asking for and making time to take, take account of the qualitative data, and that's not just in an engagement survey once a year, but continuous collection of qualitative data through employee resource groups or any other mechanism is really important. So teaching leaders how to ask effective questions about data analytics um, and, and why we're collecting certain pieces of data. Um, also to see the DNI strategy as integral to the business strategy and how to build a good integrated um, DNI and business strategy and business purpose that's values aligned together. And the third one is really teaching leaders how to become an effective ally and advocate for the diversity and inclusion message, because we really, you know, have heard so many times before that the CEO and, um, you know, vice presidents need to talk um, the right language and back DNI efforts. And that's great. Um, but that needs to be continuously translated into all other business conversations. And that's being a really effective advocate and ally. And those words have been bandied around for a long, long time. Um, but when you look at what are the competencies to be an effective ally and advocate, how do you actually push for change and realize change uh, with more diversity and inclusion efforts um, being embedded in the business is a whole nother um, realm of competency and capacity building. And that needs um, a strong effort uh, within a learning curriculum because we're finding that there's a lower competency for leaders um, with regards to knowing what to do next. Uh, they kind of got the first phase of, yep, I need to back it because I'm the senior leader. But then the second phase about what actually do I do long-term with it? Um, is then relegated to the head of people and culture or diversity and inclusion, which gets lost again. So that's that's my advice and my rep recommendation for a business school. Um, and of course, come and talk to me because um, that's just a short list of my ideas. Uh, there's a lot more where that came from. <laughs>